guys, it's Mel here from Back From Burnout. And today I thought I'd do a little video for you on how I clean and how I photograph all my shoes. So, the first thing I do is I normally wait until I've got like a pile of shoes and then I'll do them all in one load. I try not to just photograph one or two pairs of shoes unless they're really simple pairs. I, otherwise, I gather them all in buckets and when I've got quite a few of them, that's when I will do all the shoes all at once and do all the photographing. So, I'm just gonna turn it around and I'm gonna show you what I've got today. So these are the buckets of shoes that I've had um, gathering shoes for my last few trips um, to the thrift shop. Because I got quite a um, few pairs yesterday when I went to one of the shops, I've decided that today is going to be my shoe day. Now the reason I like to do like a bunch of shoes all at once is really because then you can get all your cleaning stuff out, stuff out, and you, it's just easier to clean them all in one big hit, I find. So, they're in no random order here. Um, but these are all my shoes that are waiting to photograph and now I am going to get them all out and work out which ones need to be um, cleaned. Some of them might not even need to be cleaned, but which ones need cleaning? Some of the sneakers I like to run through the washing machine, so um, I definitely want to get out those and put a load into the washing machine today. And some of them might need some boot polish and others might just need a little bit of a baby wipe. But this is what I use to clean my shoes. Okay, so I've got all my cleaning supplies out here now, as well as my pool noodles. So when I do shoes, sometimes um, you need to, some help standing the shoe up, like if it's an ankle boot or a boot. Um, sometimes even a sneaker might need a pool noodle just shoved into it. It just helps to fill the shoe out a little um, bit nicer so it, it, so it looks better in the photos. So I just keep a variety of um, pool noodles in different sizes. They've just been cut. They're random. You shove them into your shoes and they just help to fill them out nicely or help to stand up a boot. Okay, so when I'm cleaning shoes, I have this little cleaning box here ready to go um, that I keep full of cleaning supplies for shoes. So, um, let me show you what is in this um, bucket. Okay. The first thing I keep in here is a packet of baby wipes. I find them fab fabulous for everything that you're, you're cleaning. They are one of the best go-to cleaners that you can keep anywhere. Um, I just buy the cheapest one I can, either at Woolworths or Coles, and I always buy alcohol-free and scented-free. Um, yeah, so it doesn't really matter, but Baby wipes, fantastic. They're great for cleaning the soles of the shoe, the sides of the shoe. They're just overall such an all-round easy cleaner. Um, so yeah, definitely baby wipes. I have my little brush. Now, I use this to clean the soles of the shoe if they've got some dirt or um, rocks or anything stuck in them. That's normally for the hiking boots or sneakers. I find they're the ones that get the dirt trapped um, the most. I do have a little wooden brush in my regular cleaning bucket that is also a little bit tougher than this one. So if I have some really um, indented uh, soles in some in some hiking shoes or something and I, this this doesn't cut it I might pull out the little wooden one but most of the time this brush is fantastic I just take it out to my veranda and sit there and um, scrub the bottoms of the soles of the shoes so yeah fantastic okay these are little instant shine wipes these are great on black or brown leather shoes just to give the whole shoe a wipe over. It's amazing how they come to life with a simple wipe of one of these little shine wipes. Um, makes such a difference to the shoes and you know you'll definitely be able to sell the shoes for more if they're shiny. So definitely um, they're only a few dollars um, a packet and you just get them at Woolworths or Coles and I just find them fantastic to keep into my box um, 
The, the baby wipes, I would more use the soles and for the cleaning, but these are for more shining the leather. Fantastic. Um, I always just keep a couple of cleaning cloths for polishing and buffing up um, anything that might need it. Okay, this is just a self-shining um, black polish. Again, just sometimes um, some black shoes, black boots, black leather needs a little bit of a, um, a polish. So, yeah, having that in there, it's just a really simple, easy um, way to help clean your shoes. Now, the other thing that I love is a magic eraser. Oh, my gosh. I can't live without magic erasers in my house. I clean all my walls with them. Um, they're just fantastic for everything, but they are great for shoes. They get scuff marks off. You just add a little bit of water to it and, you know, it can help take the scuff off some white um, around the shoe. So definitely um, Magic Eraser is a great thing to keep. And the other thing I keep is just some shoelaces. Um, it's amazing how you can have a pair of boots with a really crummy pair of shoelaces and just by changing the shoelaces and giving them a bit of a shine, the boots just come to life and you know that can be the difference of quite a lot of dollars when you're selling a pair of shoes. So yeah, definitely um, some shoelaces are fantastic to just have on hand so you're ready to go and change if you need to. So yeah, that's about all I really need when I'm cleaning shoes. I keep it in the bucket and um, yeah, when I'm doing a bulk lot of shoes, I just pull it all out at once and get cleaning. Okay, so I've got all my shoes out. I've got my cleaning supplies ready. So the next thing I'm gonna do is sort through the shoes and see which shoes need cleaning and what type of cleaning they need. Okay, so I've got all my shoes um, that are waiting to photograph laid out now. Now, like I said before, this didn't all come from one shop. Um, I kind of try and build the shoes up so that I can do them all at once because I just find um, I'm more productive to get it all out and do it that way. So the first thing I'm looking for is any shoes that might want to go into the washing machine. And um, over here, I've got a few pairs of runners that are going to go into the machine. You can see these ones here are, are dirty on the top. These ones that have got some white, um, they will come up nice once they've been through the washing machine. And these, um, these are a bit scrappy. They're ASICs, they'll still sell well, but um, definitely a go in the washing machine will help, help that pair of shoes. And I might wash the black pair um, there as well, just to give them a little bit more life. So I think those one, two, three, four pairs of sneakers are all gonna go into the washing cycle now. Okay, there's nothing fancy about washing sneakers in the washing machine. It's pretty much the same as washing uh, clothes. So what do I use while I'm washing my sneakers? Well, I do use a bit of um, stain spray. That's, that's fine. And just in my machine, I use some regular um, sard as well as my laundry powder. I also have bra bags here that I will put the sneakers in. The first thing I'm gonna do, Bart, is take all the laces out of the shoes. Okay, so I've just taken all the shoelaces out of the shoes and I've sprayed the shoes with the um, stain remover. So now I'm gonna pop them in the wash bags and they're gonna go straight into the machine. Okay, so the shoes have just gone into the washing machine. I've got my powder um, inside, washing powder and the um, Sard Wonder powder just to give it that extra white and brighten. Um, two of the shoes have been put into wash bags and in the other wash bag I've put all the shoelaces just to keep them together and make sure none disappear into the washing machine like sometimes pairs of socks do. And um, the black shoes I've just kind of sat in there which is fine. It doesn't really matter. They don't have to be in wash bags. Um, but yeah, it does help a little bit to protect them. And these are just going to go onto a regular cold cycle and then they will go out to dry. 
Okay, so I'm just getting ready to photograph the first batch and I've just brought in some of the women's shoes that don't really need much cleaning. At the most, they might need a baby wipe. So I just do those as I go while I'm photographing. So these ones are coming in with me and these are gonna be the first ones I do. Just so you can see, I don't use anything fancy, you know. My setup is in my daughter's bedroom here and everything's just kept to the side. So pool noodles are there, my cleaning bucket's there, my tape measures are there and my shoes are to the side and I've just got this whiteboard that sits on her little bedside table um, so that I can um, photograph it. And yeah, that, that whiteboard, that's just a piece of core flute. So um, core flute is what they used to make the real estate signs on. They're getting a bit more fancy these days, but the old school, um, you know, real estate type signs, that's what, that's what that board is. It's just a piece of white core flute. You can pick that up at your local sign um, design shop, or I think even Bunnings might have them these days. So, you know, they're cheap and they're light. They're easy to wipe clean, again, with just a baby wiper or something, and um, really, really useful for photographing on. Um, tape measures are there because occasionally you'll get a pair of shoes that doesn't have a size on it, but I definitely use a tape measure to measure my high heels. So I'll show you as I go. The first pair of shoes that I'm gonna to photograph today are these black women's high heels. So I'm um, just checking the shoe to see what actually needs removing. And there's a little bit of a sticker um, here. And then I've got my Vimy sticker on there that says $8. So the first thing I'll do is I will take a photo of the Vinny sticker because um, that will tell me how much I've paid for them when I'm editing them and entering um, how much I've paid for it into my SKU. But other than that, these shoes don't really need a clean. So I'm just gonna spend about 30 seconds removing that sticker at the bottom of the shoe with a baby wipe and then set these up ready to photograph. Now, when I'm taking my shoe photos, it's nearly the same routine for every type of pair of shoes. I always start with the main photo, which is a single photo, a nice big close up of a single shoe. I then add in a second shoe and get a photo of both shoes, one slightly on an angle, so you can see the two shoes together. I then turn the shoe around and I get the back of the, back of the shoes and the heel. I then turn the shoe around to the front and get the front of the shoes. I then go to the side and get a side version of the shoes together and then I come up above and I look down and take a photo down of the shoes. Once I've done that I take a photo of the brand of the shoe and the sizing of the shoe. I then turn the shoes around and make sure I photograph the sole. It's very important to see the soles of the shoes. If there is a high heel, I will then, using the tape measure, take a photo with the tape measure laid down against one of the heels so that people can see exactly how high that heel is. And if there's any other little details, then I make sure I grab those photos also. Guys, I just wanna show you the difference between adding a pool noodle into your sneaker than not. Now you can see this left um, sneaker I've added the pool noodle in and the sneaker is sitting up and looks great that's going to be my display um, photo I'm going to take that photo with the shoe individually this photo doesn't have a pool noodle in it and see how it's really flat looking and just looks really um, average so you can just see that just by adding a little pool noodle into that sneaker it just fluffs it up and makes it look more like a display. And as long as you're taking the photo at the right angle, you will not even see the pool noodle. When it comes to taking the photo at a different angle, then that's when I would remove the pool noodle so you do not see it. Now guys, I'm not all about making the shoe soles of a shoe absolutely perfect. I mean, they're the bottom of the shoe and they're a worn shoe, so I don't expect them to look brand new. But this is a baby wipe. And this is a um, one of those erasers. And this is the difference on the shoe. Now, looking in the phone, um, you know, you can see that. 
But even when I bring my photos and do a proper photo of that, it's going to look even white, whiter and brighter, really. It's going to look nicer. But you can see the difference that like literally 10 seconds took me to wipe that with a baby wipe. Um, very simple, very quick and looks a whole heap better. I'm not going to fuss anymore with cleaning the bottom of that shoe. That is enough for me. That is going to look fine in the photo and that is totally acceptable. So, yep, go the baby wipes. Okay, my shoes have finished washing and now I'm just going to hang them out here in the sun for a little while. These probably won't be um, dry until tomorrow, um, which is fine with me. And... Um, yeah, you can see they've come up a treat. These ones are looking fantastic. You know, they have some of them come up. I mean, these ones were pretty grotty and, you know, they've come up really well. So I noticed the blue ones here, one of the stains didn't come out, but the rest of them have cleaned up fantastic. And yeah, really happy with my quick little wash. Shoes are one of those things that really amaze me at the quality of shoes that people just give away, throw away, donate, whatever. I mean, these shoes are men's dress shoes. They are like literally brand new. There's not a fault on them. Can't even see the sole. Now, these sell for around about $100, $120 new. So, I paid $10 for them. I'll be shooting for about $60. Um plus postage so it's it's just amazing like I yeah I just sometimes I just can't fathom what people throw away and you know last time when my son had his year 10 formal last year I had to go and buy dress shoes that he wore once he'll never wear again there's no way that I'll buy dress shoes again like Vinnie's all the way oh my god this is another pair like Seriously, all the shoes I've got here are in such fantastic condition. Like, none of them you would know are secondhand. The soles are good. Like, these are beautiful Joe Mercer, made in Spain. Beautiful women's wedges. Like, absolutely perfect condition. It's just crazy that I can make a job, a full-time job, of the abundance of other people. Like, I'm just so grateful for that. Like... Although it amazes me what people just discard, like it just goes to show there's such an abundance out there. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, sometimes I just sit there and think, wow, I have made a job out of this. I've made a job out of everybody else's abundance. That's amazing, don't you think? Anyway, just. While I was photographing these amazing shoes, I was just like, wow, you know, what an abundant world we live in and how grateful are we to, to do this? Like, I'm so grateful to be a reseller and be able to make a job and support my family by selling what other people are so abundant that they've given away it's just it's just crazy but you know i'm super grateful and yeah just wanted to quickly throw that in and just be like thank you thank you thank you to this universe <laughs> okay guys it's official not all crocs are ugly these are the cutest little pair of kids gumboots that i think i've ever seen they are adorable i am in love with crocs Yep, there you go, I said it. <laughs> I like Crocs now. No, honestly, like Crocs are pretty ugly shoes, but oh my goodness, these are adorable and these would be perfect for camping. Like, oh, unbelievable, so cute. Anyway, just thought I'd share. Okay guys, here's another video example of a shoe that's got a pool noodle in it. So you can see how much of a difference this high top makes by shoving some pool noodle in that shoe. This shoe now stands up and looks awesome. I can turn it around, I can fluff the front of it up, you know, it looks good. All angles, I can turn it around, it looks good, you know. Yes, these shoes are a little bit worn, you can see it. But because these are such a good brand, G-Star Raw, 
somebody will still buy these. Like, they're not gonna go for the top dollar because they're worn. But I paid $7 for those shoes and I'm easily gonna turn that money multiple times around, even on worn shoes. But yeah, I just wanted to really show you, like it just, like it does nothing if you've got not something to stand that it up in. So yeah, there you go, pool noodle for the win. Now I store all my shoes um, in the garage, in the black boxes. And just so you can see, I'm just gonna turn this around. All the shoes are packed up into bags. And, you know, sometimes I only keep one in a bag, but that's basically just so that when they're in the boxes, they don't get scuffed, um, they don't get um, damaged in any way. And, um, you know, I also use that to, um, when I'm posting them out, I keep them in the bag and then I, I bubble wrap it and it's just for protection. Um, some of the bigger shoes, like the big men's work boots or something, they might not fit in the bag, so I just pop them in the the black tub. But, you know, I, I just do them the same as I do my clothing. Um, when I'm entering it into the SKU, it just basically tells me, you know, what box they're in. And then I also still put the price that I've paid for the shoes. So yeah, the stores are basic. The shoes are basically stored the same way that my clothes are. It's very easy. Everything's easy for me to find, and um, you know nothing gets damaged. So that's my shoes. So guys, that's it for my shoe video today. I hope you have learned a little bit about how. I um, clean and photograph and store my shoes. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and um, give me a like. Thanks guys, bye.